Hello friends, in this video I'm going to share with you 34 things I quit to simplify my life. As I've got older I've discovered there are many things that have made me happier and healthier and a lot of these discoveries have come about by removing certain things from my life. As always though, this is just my personal experience and ultimately I'm just a guy that makes videos on YouTube, but this is what's worked for me. Personal habits I've quit. Being messy. I've never been especially tidy, and I think I used to convince myself that this helped me be more creative, but I'm fairly sure now that that's absolute bollocks. Having children has made me stop being messy because the thought of adding my own mess into the mess that they create doesn't bear thinking about. Clutter. And the best way for me to be less messy is to reduce my own clutter by owning less things. I've been systematically decluttering my own possessions over the last few years to the extent now that the recycling Recycling center is my happy place. Buying stuff. As Tyler Durden said, Things you own end up owning you. Other than when I need something, I've more or less stopped buying stuff. I much prefer to spend my money on experiences, things that will create memories. And this is why I have quit placing too much value on my possessions. There's nothing you can buy in the mall that you'll give a fuck about in five years time. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. We come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing, which is why I've also quit collecting things. As a teenager, my CD collection was my pride and joy. In my 20s, it was my DVD collection. Technology has made both of these pretty much obsolete. I've streamlined my collections, but I'm not yet at the point where I totally want to get rid of them. But I don't add to them and I don't collect anything anymore. Being lazy. So it's been just over three years since we added Luna here to our family. And I really credit her with boosting my daily step count. Walking every day really boosts your mood, it boosts your energy, and also increases your aerobic fitness. Things I've quit eating and drinking. For all of my adult life, I'm not ashamed to admit that I've been hideously addicted to Diet Coke. At my worst, I was drinking upwards of six cans a day. I've tried many times to cut back or reduce my consumption, but the only thing that worked, as any addict knows, is to cut it out entirely. I didn't touch any Diet Coke throughout the whole of 2023, which I consider to be one of my best achievements. Caffeine. The side effect of me quitting Diet Coke is that my coffee intake has gone up. But I'm very strict about limiting my caffeine only to the mornings. Lunchtime is my cutoff point for drinking coffee, and this does help with my sleep. I've never been a great sleeper, so cutting out caffeine at least 10 hours before bed has been the simplest way to help with this, and it does work. Alcohol. I stopped drinking alcohol just over three years ago. I never had a problem with it, but I do find that abstinence is far easier than moderation. Quitting alcohol improves your health, your weight, your sleep, and it saves you money. It's not a magic bullet that will transform your life, but I have found that by not drinking alcohol, it's far more likely that I'll make other healthier choices. And I do credit quitting alcohol with a rapid improvement in my fitness as well. Red meat. I now tend to eat a largely vegetarian diet, but I do eat some poultry and fish. I consciously decided to quit eating red meat over a decade ago. It's just one of those things that I'm really happy to live without. Digital things I've quit. Instagram. When you start to become aware that social media platforms are pushing more things in your direction that you didn't ask for, it's time to walk away. And I think Facebook is the biggest culprit for this. At first, I used to enjoy seeing what my friends are up to, but the suggested posts and adverts on this platform have got way out of hand. X. And I'm sure it won't be a surprise to you to know that I've all but abandoned X as well. It's full of gutter chat and spam adverts. Time on X is not time well spent. News. Last November, I spent 30 days actively avoiding all news. I called it No News November. Constant negative news really affects my mood. Whilst I like to be informed, I don't want this to be at the cost of my mental health and happiness. So now I'm much more selective about how much news I consume, and this has had a direct correlation with my personal happiness. Ways of thinking I have quit being too hard on myself. I've always been very self-critical. I used to think things about myself that I'd never dream of saying to anyone else. And this kind of thinking is toxic. It makes your life miserable. Over time, I've accepted that I'm doing my best, even if things aren't going as well as I would like. Just be kind and gentle to yourself, always. Being too hard on other people. And this means that you need to be even kinder and more gentle to other people. Everybody has their own battle going on, which you probably don't know anything about. Staring at the hole rather than the donut. 
or in other words, focusing on what you don't have rather than what you do have. Life as a pessimist leads to negative thinking which can spiral out of control. Gratitude is the best way to combat negative thinking. I always try to focus on feeling grateful for everything that I have in my life. Sweating the small stuff. This really comes with life experience. The one positive that comes from traumatic experiences is that it gives you much needed perspective. Difficult times caused through illness or suffering really show us what's important in life and that the majority of our worries and stresses are so trivial. I always try to remember this. Caring what other people think. When you're 20, you care what everyone thinks. When you're 40, you stop caring what everyone thinks. When you're 60, you realize no one was ever thinking about you in the first place. I love this quote. People are mostly just thinking about themselves. They're so wrapped up in their own lives that the majority won't care about anything you do. Worrying. Do you never worry? Would it help? This quote from Bridge of Spies has always been a reminder to me about the futility of worrying. I admit that this is a work in progress for me, but I'm fully aware that worrying about something is not going to help. If there's something I can do to alleviate the worry, then I will do that. If not, I will try and accept the situation. Being competitive with others. I am naturally competitive, but as I've got older, the only person I try and compete with is myself. A lot of this has come about through taking up running five years ago. I don't run to win or compete with anyone else. I run to feel strong within myself. Nobody cares how fast you run in the same way that nobody cares how successful you may become. Life is not a competition. Indecision. My New Year's resolution last year was to make decisions quicker, and it's amazing what a difference this has made. The risk of a wrong decision is preferable to the terror of indecision. Never a truer word was spoken. Things I've quit doing with my phone. This little weapon of mass distraction has caused me so much grief over the years I have a whole section of this video dedicated to the things I quit doing with it. And the first of these is taking my phone to the toilet. There are two types of people in the world, people who check their phone in the bathroom and people who lie about checking their phone in the bathroom. I will happily admit that when my two boys were younger, a strategic toilet visit would be the perfect excuse for a phone binge, but I don't do it now for two reasons. Number one, it's really not very hygienic, and number two, 30 minutes sat on the toilet is not a good use of time. Unless, of course, you have a stomach upset, in which case it's probably necessary. Using my phone as an alarm clock. Putting my phone outside my bedroom relieves any temptation to look at it prior to going to sleep. I now use a dedicated alarm clock to wake up in the morning, and this also helps to get rid of the temptation to look at my phone first thing. Resisting the temptation to look at my phone as soon as I wake up is one of the most important things that I do to start my day in the right way using my phone for entertainment. I try and make my phone as minimalist and unappealing as possible. This means removing anything remotely entertaining on it. So there's no social media apps and there's no games because I find these way too addictive. The only thing remotely entertaining on my phone is the Fatify app, which admittedly is very entertaining, but I don't tend to spend hours using it. Having anything on my phone's display. Part of ensuring that my phone remains as minimalist as possible is having a blank screen as my homepage. This helps with making it unappealing to use. I also have a shortcut enabled which allows me to press the side button on my phone three times to make it black and white. Even Fatify isn't as much fun when it's in black and white. All notifications. This is probably the one tip that you hear more than any other when it comes to trying to curb your phone use, and with good reason. The only notifications that I have on my phone are for when it rings, and obviously for Fatify. We're into the final 10 things that I've quit to simplify my life, and this miscellaneous batch is somewhat uncategorizable. Guilty pleasures. I don't believe in guilty pleasures. If you fucking like something, like it. This quote is one of the reasons why I'm never afraid to admit that I have a lifelong love of Pet Shop Boys. Multitasking. If you chase two rabbits, you will not catch either one, says the famous proverb. I credit Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, with helping me banish the idea of trying to multitask. The One Thing stands for prioritizing a single task and focusing on it intently. It's been a huge help. Taking my health for granted. For me, turning 40 was the point at which I realized I had to take my health more seriously. Up until that point, I'd just been able to get away with things. I didn't have any health complications, but I had this desire to become fitter and healthier than I've ever been before. With the main reason being that I wanted to give myself the best chance of a long and healthy life. Improving my fitness is the best thing I've ever done, and the discipline that goes with this has rippled through into every area of my life. Being afraid to fail. When you fail, you grow, and with growth, you learn. You just need to look at the number of YouTube videos on my channel which have flopped spectacularly to see that I fail all the time. It's really useful feedback. 
arguing with people on the internet. Unless you enjoy debating, let people enjoy their freedom of speech. There will never be any winner in online arguments. Saying yes. I used to hate saying no to people, but I also hated saying yes to things and then feeling a sudden dread straight afterwards. Once I identified my priorities, it became much easier to say no. You just have to make sure you say it in the nicest possible way. Putting things off. Time goes on, so whatever you're gonna do, do it. Do it now, don't wait. This is really what I hope my YouTube channel is all about. Doing things today that my future self will thank me for. Hard choices equals easy life. Easy choices equals hard life. It's not glamorous and it's definitely not easy, but it really works. If you've made it this far, I would really love to hear your thoughts on any of the things I've talked about in this video. And I promise not to get into an online argument with you. Thank you for watching. And if you're new here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.